and welcome to This Week in Agriculture, a presentation of the Communications Unit, Ministry of Agriculture. I'm your producer and host, Christopher Holder. On this week's presentation, we take a look at our rice industry. We hear that Guyana earned some 123 million U.S. dollars uh, from the sale of rice and rice products for the first half of this year. Uh, that's good news. Um, this comes in the wake of record production levels again for the first crop and even though uh, farmers um, suffered some losses at least three percent of the harvest was lost uh, due to the onset of uh, the wet weather um, those farmers were unable to get their paddy out of the fields and to the factories um, so that ended um, they were able to have a good first crop and then those who went back to the lands uh, sold uh, their crops and so on uh, the waters came and a lot of uh, those uh, first set of rice uh, that was sown it was destroyed uh, the farmers lost that so in the hardest hit areas black bush um, the, the three creeks abari maikoni and mahaika some other areas also affected in region region three um, you know those farmers have been facing significant challenge. Nevertheless, uh, we see that farmers have been rising about those challenges, meeting them head on, and still they have resown lands and those who have not been affected by flood uh, waters, they are quite advanced in their second crop effort. So we'll be hearing all about uh, the challenges of our rice farmers and how they are performing. And of course, we will hear about the interventions in Region 5 um, by the MMA and NDIA uh, agencies of the Ministry of Agriculture in helping farmers uh, get the water out of the land both in the uh, farmlands and from the residential areas. So all that in this week's edition of This Week in Agriculture. We will be back after these messages. In light of recent flooding and the lodging of floodwaters in some communities, the Ministry of Agriculture through the GLDA is warning of the dangers lurking in stagnant floodwaters. Leptospirosis is caused by bacteria that results in severe damage to the liver, kidneys, and other organs of both animals and humans. One risk factor include walking or playing in floodwaters, especially floodwaters that have become stagnant. Leptospirosis is transmitted through the urine of infected rodents, livestock, and pets. The Leptospira bacteria can enter the body of animals and humans through drinking, through cuts in the skin, or through mucus membranes in the eyes, nose, and mouth. Symptoms of leptospirosis in both animals and humans include fever, jaundice, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, weakness, stiffness, and severe muscle pain. In light of the current rainy season and widespread flooding, livestock and pet owners are advised to implement good agricultural practices and, where possible, have your animals vaccinated against this disease immediately. A message from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry of Agriculture is warning members of the public that it is illegal to dump garbage of any kind near to or into drainage and irrigation waterways across the country. The NDIA, the agency tasked with the maintenance of drainage and irrigation in Guyana, has noted that there is an alarming increase in the incidence of garbage getting into DNI waterways and causing blockages in the first instance. But worse than that, the garbage that includes clothing, rotting carcasses, pieces of wood and metal, gets past protection grills of the critical mobile and fixed pumps resulting in damage to the pumps which have to be taken out of service for repairs placing communities at risk especially during the rainy season the Ministry of Agriculture notes that when this happens millions have to be spent on repairs to the pumps and on clearing the canals of debris thrown there by irresponsible citizens the ministry warns that rangers of the NDIA will be on the lookout for those engaging in this illegal practice persons caught will be made to face the full force of the law. A message from the NDIA Ministry of Agriculture. Over 
for the last 10 years, seed treatment has been proven to be very effective in protecting rice plants from damage by early season pests, such as water weevils, leaf miners, and caterpillars. This protection can last for up to 30 days. In so doing, it allows for better establishment of the rice plants and later, no bare spots in the field. Seed treatment also negates the need for using harmful pesticides during the first 30 days of the crop and therefore allows the buildup of beneficial insects such as the ladybird beetle, damselflies, dragonflies, and spiders, which will later prove useful against paddy bugs at every stage of their life cycle. Seed treatment involves the application of piperonil at 20% soluble concentrate in a spray can to germinated seed. The mix is 1 liter of piperonil to 2.5 gallons of water to treat 10 120 pound bags of paddy. This can be done manually as seen here. The seed is spread on a level surface and the chemical applied using a spray can. It is then turned and sprayed a few times until the farmer is satisfied that he has achieved complete wetting of his seed paddy. Treated seed paddy is then covered and allowed to be incubated or pressed for the normal 36 to 48 hours. Then it is ready for sowing. It should be noted that in treating the seed, farmers applying the pesticide should wear the appropriate protective gear as seen here to protect against the harmful effects of the chemical on the skin or if inhaled. From 2010 since I start my seed treatment, that's when I started and uh, have uh, continued. I've never stopped because I've seen the benefit of seed treatment. And I've seen increased yield, I've seen production better because it actually gives you 25 to 40 days that you don't have to go back into the field and do any kind of a pesticide control because that actually helps you. So farmers, I'm advising you and I'm giving you that advice because I've been doing this since 2010 and I'd like to see farmers uh, benefit also from these six points. Seed treatment is a critical step in the realization of higher yield. If you have not yet adopted this practice, try it this crop. A message from the GRDB Ministry of Agriculture. Amidst a national disaster as a result of unprecedented rainfall and widespread flooding, Guyana's rice farmers continue to demonstrate a significant degree of testicular fortitude in persevering with sowing and, for some, preparation for sowing of the 2021 second crop. Four rice farmers of Blackbush pulled under quarantine. This crop has nearly not happened, had it not been for the immediate and decisive interventions of Agriculture Minister Zulfika Mustafa and government through its emergency response teams, not only in Blackbush but in other hard-hit areas in the Habari, Maikoni and Mahaika Creeks. More than 30,000 acres of lands which had been sown in these areas were lost due to flood waters but many have now been able to re-sow these lands, while for others who are hoping for the waters to recede further, it's a race against time. The planting season, our best time period to plant, is up to around the second week in July, but many of the farmers who have still not been able to sow their paddy, and still plan to, will have to do so as late as the end of July. For them, it's do or die. Better to get something than get nothing. For rice farmers at Blackbush, especially in the Yakusari, Joanna, and Maibikuri blocks, the flooding has hit them hard, with many unable to plant this crop because of the magnitude of the losses they have suffered. Flood waters still threaten many of these lands, and the farmers there are fearful that should they re -sow, then they could lose again. While the flood waters have receded in many of the flood-hit communities, it still lingers in other communities such as in the Abari, Maikoni and Mahaika Creeks. And while it is slowly receding, many farmers are still unable to risk sowing and losing again. In this edition, we look at the positive developments ongoing behind the flood-related bad news headlines. We bring you news of how our rice farmers have been braving the inclement weather and forging ahead with sowing of rice for the second crop this year. But before we look at the production figures as released by the GRDB, let's focus a bit on another bit of good news coming from the rice sector. Agriculture Minister Zofika Mustafa has reported that Guyana has earned some 123 million US dollars in exports of rice and rice products for the first half of this year. We are in midst of the sowing of this second crop for 2021. The last crop 
what we have, have, have done, we had 232,278 acres were sown. And just about 97% were harvested. Because you know the flood came in and some of the, um, some of the uh, crop were left in the field and were unable to rice. You know, rice is a thing that when water normally um, go into the field and it's ready to reap, it starts to uh, fall and a lot of rice fell and it was in the mud. So about 3% of the crop we, were, we did not get to reap. That amounted to uh, close to about 3,000 acres of, 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 uh, that were not reaped. But for last month, uh, for June last month, we have an export of 59,745 tons. And that equivalent to 27,052,074 27, US dollars. 27,052,074 27, US dollars that brought me to the front for last month. For the year from January to June, we had a total export of 282,053 tons and a total export value of 123,000. Six hundred and twelve thousand one hundred twenty three million sorry six hundred twelve thousand one hundred six dollars of income that we had last year. So that caps our first crop production effort as well as exports as of the end of June this year. But even as news of great losses being experienced by rice farmers in East and West Barbese and other rice growing areas in regions 3 and 4, the rest of the rice growing communities have been quietly sowing their fields and now contrary to anticipations of a greatly reduced second crop production, the GRDB is reporting that the shortfall will not be as significant as previously envisaged. The second crop revised target is now set at 183,433 acres. Of that amount, farmers have already sown 128,797 acres. Of that amount, farmers reported a loss of some 15,000 acres due to the heavy buildup of water on the rice lands. However, of the 15,000 acres lost to floodwaters, farmers were able to re-sow 5,568,000 5 acres of those lands. The rest may very well be re -sown later. According to the GRDB figures, the hardest hit regions are regions 5 and 6. In region 5, GRDB figures show that of a revised target of 69,000 acres, farmers had sown 42,000 acres of which some 6,000 acres were lost to flood waters. These farmers are now in the process of re their lands. It should be noted that farmers in badly impacted areas of Abari, Maikoni, and Mahaika Creeks, whose rice lands are now slowly draining, have indicated that once conditions permit, then they will cultivate their lands, even if it's at the end of July. Across in East Barbese, Rice farmers are working towards the revised target of 51,795 acres, of which some 26,000 acres have already been sown. Farmers who had sown early in the season had lost some 7,000 acres due to the flood waters. However, half of that amount has already been re-sown, while other farmers are aiming to re-sow those fields that were lost before to the flooding. Farmers in all the rice growing areas have indicated that they will continue to sow their fields, all true the month of July, and with the help promised by government, they are optimistic that much good will come of all the negatives that have plagued the crop so far. In the flood-affected areas in Blackbush, farmers have been loud in their prayers of government for their wide and comprehensive interventions which were instituted after consultation with the affected communities. Well, we had excessive rainfall. And all the crops could have lose if it wasn't for the government intervention. By deploying machines, additional pump for the outfall, paying the outfalls, and uh, the intervention of the Agri Minister, visit the areas many times and walk along with the people. And um, actually, everything that the people requested, the government assisted with. So, we couldn't have a crop without the intervention of the government. Well, he had plenty because uh, they can see that clean them all and selling and think we had drainage. We have black up all the area where water come in. And they do very good for the short piece of time. Yeah, me show about four about a week before the rain. And then the rain come and flood the place. 
the water coming from Savannah, and the government tried to block all the area them, with the water drain out. So they do a lot with the short feature time. Clear up all the drainage and things, get drainage. Were you able to save the crop? Yeah, we, we lost a little bit, but not plenty, but we saved most. I'm cultivating 28 acres of rice, and for the, with, for, with this flood that we have experienced for the past months and so or so, it was a terrible flood, terrible, terrible. And the, with the intervention of the, the government and the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Mustafa Zulfikar, with his help and the government help, they have, they have managed to control this water. The water was terrible. Rain stopped for about two weeks now, and we are still having flood. But they have dislodged several machine, high marks, and sent it to the field at the back. And wherever there are breaches, they have sealed it. And we, have, we are having enough drainage now. Across in Region 5, farmers have also expressed gratitude to the government and Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa for the interventions thus far. Yes, yeah, so the water keep rising. The MMA help us empower the place, so we keep pumping. And we managed to save, but not everything. Well, out of the 100, we, we, the, the, there is 100, 140, we like to save about half of it. We can, it's every time you empower it, the water keep rising and break it away. So it's gonna come back and, and every time you dock and you pump it back, half melt out. Getting to this crop was, was real hectic um, from day one, from sowing the paddy to, to the fields. Um, after that was, 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 was total chaos. The flood water came from, from all around, um, but the intervention from the government through MMA and NDIA, um, I, must, I must say was, was, was awesome. They, they supply um, HIMAX to most of the rice farmers at, all that were um, cultivated. Um, it took us like 21 days, 21 days, full days, 24 hours, to save um, the rice crop. Um, over 250 to 300 gallons of diesel, two tractors, 24 hours per day. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, we lost some, but it was, it was hectic. Sleepless nights, you know. I mean, not not a rice farmer profession. Um, if I knew this was was such a hard task, you know, I would never ever get into rice. But that's that's life, no. Um, having said that, I must compliment the government of Guyana. They did. I mean, they tried their best to assist farmers. Um, they did what they had to do, and I must thank them. I must thank MMA um, to, to one guy, Moses, who was here from day one. You know, I, I think he's a ranger. Um, he, he has monitored the, the situation very well. And you know, fortunately, I've, I've saved the rice crop. Not to the, to the extent where, where I want to, but at least it will compensate. It will compensate to get back to somewhere. Right. Through the flood is a really rough time. And through the aid of the Ministry of Agriculture, NDIA and MMA, collaboration, I was able to save most of my rice. I would like to special thanks to the Minister of Agriculture. He was on the ground making some uh, good decisions right on the, in the presence of the farmers, which is a very good initiative. And, and, uh, and uh, as the rice farmers of East San Jacob, Joanna Creek, Governor Light, we, all of we was able to, most of us were able to save our crops with their, their interventions of uh, helping the machinery. Well, what do you think could be some of the steps that could be taken now to avoid a recurrence next year or anything? Like okay, um, the first step, the government um, dams, it needs to be the height, it needs to be, you know, recap, like, give them the height so that the water wouldn't overtop it. Uh, and two, the structure right on this road here. The, two, the structure across the road, the water come there and brace, so they will start to rise. If the, the structure needs to be removed and put bridges, concrete bridges, so the water will have a free access. For rice farmers in the front lands of Fowles, Belladrum, etc., 
early interventions by Agriculture Minister Mustafa ensured that the rice lands and residential areas were safe from flood waters, as is explained by this farmer and councillor of the NDC. Well, actually, as the rainy season started, uh, I got some calls that there were breaches from the Abari Creek in Plantation Profit and Plantation Falls and El Dorado of, it, of a hole, where water was coming from the Abari Creek and into the cultivated areas. And upon request, when I heard, I went and visit, and uh, I made request to MME, and the managers, Comrade Rafferdin, and all of these people, sent machines right away. So I was there for a couple of days, we did profit, they sent two excavators there and we sealed the breach at profit, the entire profit, and then we went to El Dorado. El Dorado had a major breach, about over 300 rats. Water was coming some six inches and a long dam from the creek into the cultivated areas, into El Dorado. And the machine spent a couple of days well there, sealing that breach. Um, if that breach was not sealed, there was no rice and half of, of El Dorado Belladrum, as you know, would have been underwater. Terrible water. So I must compliment the manager and Mr. Rafferdin and all the other rest of the guys who facilitated the machines in that timely manner. And, um, the area is not dried right now. Water is still there, but we don't we are not being affected by it at this present moment because we black it out. Um, there are some other small breaches that we can fix at this present moment. Um, this they said they will be doing that uh, because they have a project that we will be running through uh, plantation falls and profit later down. There's a cooker that they got to do, so they will be doing that at a later date. But at present, we are good for now. The scope and magnitude of the interventions in the three creeks, Abari, Maikoni, and Mahaika, were monumental. And while it is still ongoing, it has resulted in rice farmers being able to sow what they have sown thus far. And the hope is that they will be able to re-sow flooded lands by the end of July, if not earlier. Vice Chairman of the MMA ADA, Mr. Mohamed Rafiuddin, has been on the ground with the intervention teams of the MMA and NDIA, working tirelessly in the various flood-stricken areas in the creeks and lands south of the MMA main canal. I spoke with him for a first-hand account of what it took to manage flood waters in the scheme this time around. If we're talking Abari Barbies, then north of the main canal, we would have saved close to 50,000 acres of land. And I'm talking land here, because this would have encompasses also, like I said, residential areas and so on while about 35,000 acres of that is rice. So we can safely say, north of the main canal, Abari Barbies, we have about approximately 35,000 acre land that is saved. On the ground, we have about more than 60% of that is already sown, and the rest, farmers are on the ground doing land preparation and will be sown, some will be sown shortly, while I'm expecting by the, by the first week in next month, most of that will be, will be sown. That's north of the main canal. Lands on south of the main canal would have been approximately 13 to 15,000 acres with rice, most of which Farmers are unable to go on the ground because of the flooded situation. However, 
something to note. Before the flood came, some farmers was on the ground already doing land preparation and sowing. Some would have already sown. And because of the intervention by the government, the government have provided machines for those farmers to impold their plots. And they were able to pump those water out. And that would have amounts to, I would think, around 1,500 acres that would have been saved in this area because of the intervention by the government making machine available to secure these um, farmers' area. Abari Maikoni. Abari Maikoni, we were able to empolder and save an, at 23,000 acres. That is in the Borma Mards block. What we did, we made an embankment at, by Mora Point from the Abari facade to the Maikoni facade stopping all the back the backwater from coming in front so that area the Burma research and it's that's important also to mention Burma research that area there the Burma research area is where the seed paddy for this country is coming from and we were able to control that area which is about 23,000 acre while the research station is about 600 acres, but we're able to control over 23,000 acres of land there. Again, more than 50% of that is sown, and the next 50% farmers are on the ground doing land preparation and will be sown shortly. South of that, going beyond that area, we have there approximately seven to 8,000 acres, some of which would have been cattle, or, or a little more, 9,000, some of which would have been cattle and a little rice. Those areas, there, we have lost those areas because the water is very high there. On the left bank of the Maikoni, we couldn't have done much because we try because of the water levels are so high. On the right bank of the Mahaika River, we were able to save approximately, as in the Dehoop block, about 15,000 acres, while we would have lost um, some there also. So when you sum it up there, Mr. Holder, I think close to 70,000 acres from the 103 or 104,000 acres are secure and something that I would like to mention also at this point. At one point the government had close to 50 hydraulic excavators working across this region to help to facilitate and to service farmers trying our best to secure their fields, secure their property, secure their, 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 their home, their homestead, the areas that they live in. Over the last 10 years, seed treatment has been proven to be very effective in protecting rice plants from damage by early season pests, such as water weevils, leaf miners, and caterpillars. This protection can last for up to 30 days. In so doing, it allows for better establishment of the rice plants and later, no bare spots in the field. Seed treatment also negates the need for using harmful pesticides during the first 30 days of the crop and therefore allows the buildup of beneficial insects, such as the ladybird beetle, damselflies, dragonflies, and spiders 
sliders, which will later prove useful against paddy bugs at every stage of their life cycle. C treatment involves the application of piperonil at 20% soluble concentrate in a spray can to germinate its seed. The mix is 1 liter of piperonil to 2.5 gallons of water to treat 10 120 pound bags of paddy. This can be done manually as seen here. The seed is spread on a level surface and the chemical applied using a spray can. It is then turned and sprayed a few times until the farmer is satisfied that he has achieved complete wetting of his seed paddy. Treated seed paddy is then covered and allowed to be incubated or pressed for the normal 36 to 48 hours. Then it is ready for sowing. It should be noted that in treating the seed, farmers applying the pesticide should wear the appropriate protective gear as seen here to protect against the harmful effects of the chemical on the skin or if inhaled. From 2010 since I start my seed treatment, that's when I started and uh, have uh, continued. I've never stopped because I've seen the benefit of seed treatment. And I've seen increased yield, I've seen production better because it actually gives you 35 to 40 days that you don't have to go back into the field and do any kind of a pesticide control because that actually helps you. So farmers, I'm advising you and I'm giving you that advice because I've been doing this since 2010 and I'd like to see farmers uh, benefit also from these six point. Seed treatment is a critical step in the realization of higher yield. If you have not yet adopted this practice, try it this crop. A message from the GRDB Ministry of Agriculture. Well, that's all the time we have on this week's edition of This Week in Agriculture, a presentation of the Communications Unit, Ministry of Agriculture. On behalf of the entire production team then, I'm Christopher Holder saying so long. See you around.